Hi, welcome to this week's Whiteboard Wednesday. My name is Garrett Gross and I'm an Application Security Specialist here at Rapid7. Today I'm going to talk to you about the OWASP Top 10. Now historically this report is released every three or four years. It's based primarily on about 40 submissions from AppSec specialized firms as well as a survey completed by over 500 industry professionals. This report represents vulnerabilities gathered from hundreds if not thousands of organizations and encompasses over 100,000 production applications. Now these vulnerabilities are selected by prevalence of data as well as estimates on exploitability, detectability, and impact to your organization. The structure of the report. Now, as I said earlier, the top 10 ranks the threats by ability to exploit, how often we see it out in the wild, and how easy it is to detect. It's going to provide criteria to help you identify if your application is vulnerable and gives example attack scenarios to help you understand the underlying mechanics. It also provides guidance on how to prevent these attacks as well as additional references to show where the data came from. Now some of the changes that we saw in the latest report, we saw first and foremost what didn't change. Uh, injections and broken authentication are still number one and two respectively probably because you know, SQL injection is rampant. I mean, we see, we've seen injection for over 20 years, but in addition to SQL, we see NoSQL injection, OS commands, and LDAP injection. So things like procedural NoSQL statements, uh, while they may offer better performance increases due to the lower restrictions on their consistency, they tend to have a greater impact when the vulnerabilities are actually exploited. Broken authentication. Uh, this includes improperly configured or weak authentication processes, as well as poor session management. This is going to result in attackers compromising credentials and assuming other users' identities. Now, A4 and A7 from 2013 were merged into A5, which is now known as broken access control. This happens when authenticated users' access isn't controlled properly, and you end up with a larger than normal amount of elevated access, and this increases your attack surface exponentially. Cross-site scripting moved from A3 to A7. While we still see plenty of this out in the wild, it's probably lower on the list due to better browser-based cross-site scripting protection, and thus harder to actually exploit. Sensitive data exposure moved from A6 to A3, probably due to more compromises of PII, uh, due to improper encryption, mishandling at the browser level, but also these attacks are just more prevalent. The more we see them out in the news, the more lucrative these attacks seem to others. So in conclusion, the OWASP Top 10 gives us great visibility into what the rest of the InfoSec community is seeing in regards to AppSec. It provides us with a framework to classify future application security threats, and it's a great way to start assessing your application's security posture. You can use this as a reference point to prioritize your threats, as well as figure out how to remediate them. For more information, feel free to visit OWASP.com, and to see how Rapid7 can help you secure applications against these threats, you can start a free trial. That's it for this week's Whiteboard Wednesday. Stay safe out there.